Here today we will go through this new concept called windowing within stream analytics. So to explain that, let me go through an example. Let's imagine the stream of data. For those who do not know what streams are, there's a different video, please take a look at that. But for those who understand the basics of stream and streaming data, in this example I'm using credit cards. So these are individual credit cards uh, being processed. And if you think about processing streaming data, the big problem is that the data is continuous or somewhat infinite. You have this stream of data coming in and you need to process this data, right? So one way of processing data, let me take the next slide here, is um, using a time axis, right? And kind of slicing the data. So you can take this infinite uh, data stream and slice it, divide and conquer, basically, and uh, look at that data in chunks of these slices, right? So windowing helps with that. And in this example, I have credit card data. <clears throat> and if you look at credit card data, C1, for example, C1 is being processed, and I put locations here in Austin, which is a city in Texas. And uh, the same C1 data is also being processed a little while after uh, on the time axis. Uh, let's see what the first type of windowing looks like and the windowing, uh, simple windowing uh, concept I'm using here is called fixed windows. So let me write that down for you. Fixed windows, fixed, right? So it's a fixed window. And why is it called a fixed window? Because you have a one minute window here, which is <clears throat> again, uh, moving over to the next one minute window and so forth, right? And I have taken these credit card processing events in one window and these in the next and so on, right? So. Uh, so if I want to look at, um, let's say, a fraud detection application, which is, uh, you know, uh, some kind of analytics I have to run after processing, I still have a problem here, right? So if I take this window, one minute window, which is fixed, and I'll take, um, let's see, our credit card one, C1, which is unique, and C1, if I process this data as chunks, I did not see that the same C1, which was processed in Austin, was also processed in C1 as a credit card one in New York after a minute. And that is a problem because if you think about it, New York and Austin are kind of far apart around, you know, 1,700 miles apart. Similarly, if I have Austin and uh, San Francisco processing happening over a minute, something's wrong. You cannot definitely land, <laughs> take a plane, and go across the cities in a minute's time, right? So there's a problem here. So this fixed window might be good for processing, but you might need a different mechanism to see or detect fraud across these credit card, uh, you know, credit card processing across multiple cities. So this is other concept, which is called sliding windows. I'm, I'll write it down first and explain it. So sliding windows which is very similar to fixed windows in the sense that they are fixed. So however, this window has started, you know, let's say plus 30 seconds. This example, right, plus 30 seconds. Started at plus 30 seconds, but has a width or time elapsed. Um, let me check this out for you from here to here of one minute. Right, so this is still a one minute window, except has started 30 seconds. And while this, if you think about the stream moving and the data moving, while this window is still active, another window starts up and, you know, around plus 30 seconds. And it processes the data for a minute, right? So that's the concept here, which is really a sliding window. So you have two windows and sliding over each other. But the good news here is because um, these are sliding windows, I might be able to capture this, uh, you know, the C1 
fraud problem which I mentioned earlier right so I have this within that window right the red window right and I have <clears throat> the same C1 this event in the yellow uh, window so you know you could write logic or you could have some machine learning if you have real-time machine learning which is pretty complicated that's a topic for another discussion but let's say you you could theoretically say that I see C1 in the red window I also see C1 in the yellow window there seems to be a problem right uh, uh, or I see C1 for this location in the yellow window which is not the same location as this location in Austin so there are uh, ideas you can implement there it's uh, streaming data and streaming processing is somewhat complicated I'm not going to details here this is supposed to be for beginners to explain the concept of what a sliding window is and I think I've done that here right two windows and this window the yellow window has started before the red window in this case the red lines have stopped or this red window has finished so that's an example of a sliding window which is a different windowing concept and last concept the last one I want to walk you folks through is what we call a session window and uh, in that in this case I'm going to be focused on these events C1 or a period of time so T1 and T2 and then I do not oh I do have uh, C1 here at 3 T3 and I have C2 okay again on different time windows and now I will have a, to measure or to track this uh, what I call a session I will take this key which is C1 and I'll track that across time so this is what it looked like I will have C1 tracked across time right I have two events kind of close by and then have a gap a gap of inactivity I have a gap of inactivity here, a gap of inactivity here for C5, so which is you know somewhere between the first event of C2 and C5. Let's go back just to make sure. Yeah, C5 happens after a C2 event, second C2 event happens. Let's check that. C5 hap oh, the C5 happens after the second C2. What about this first one? Let me check that. It's between the first and second. Uh oh, okay, there we go. C5 is happening between these two C2 events. So it's somewhat modeled out. Uh, like this more of a session activity across this um, credit card and this credit card obviously these three credit cards and when you look at it you have something interesting happening these two events are happening together and therefore they might be something you have to go deep dive into and see if these are legit activities because they happen very very close to each other from a time axis from a time gap point of view and these kind of look normal so you want to take a look at it and see if it's in the same store you made a mistake maybe in two different locations and that could trigger you know fraudulent flags while you process this data so let's move forward and uh, do a recap three things we talked about fixed window it has fixed sizes pretty straightforward and the new window typically I mean in fixed windows are always after the old window so you don't have any overlap and new window comes after the old window in a sliding window however you have windows overlapping and um, you have the new window which comes in before the previous window closes I think I walked you through that example so the new window is sliding over the previous window and that's why it's called a sliding window and the other challenge you have is you have the same event captured in multiple windows so I explained how the same credit card could be part of two different windows uh, useful for you know anomaly detection or fraud detection but uh, also very very complicated in terms of processing it uh, the fixed windows also call I think they call tumbling windows so you'll see the word use tumbling tumbling windows uh, when you think about fixed windows and session windows are time uh, time activity but they're focused on a specific key in our example it's a credit card number or you know some you know some loyalty number or some unique identifier it's key centric but it is focused on the activity across time and you keep the focus there is again what the gaps across these activities are across time you have too much act too many activities happening you might have a problem right so this covers the three basic concepts of windowing within streaming i hope you understand these three concepts before i take on advanced topics thank you bye